Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture I will continue to prove some more properties of uh, the set of roots. So, indeed we will prove that uh, the set of roots actually will satisfy the properties of the root system. So, let us begin. So, first I will recall uh, what we have done so far. Uh, so, we actually fixed a maximal total subalgebra inside uh, our semi simple e algebra g. So, g is given to be finite dimensional semi simple e algebra over c. So, now with respect to this uh, uh, maximal total subalgebra and then with respect to the adjoint action of uh, this maximal total subalgebra on g. So, we can write g as direct sum of uh, this root spaces. So, in particularly so, we have g equal to h direct sum direct sum g alpha alpha is in phi. So, this is the root space decomposition that we have actually proved already. So, in this uh, root space decomposition uh, recall that g alpha is nothing but uh, those x in g such that the bracket h x is given to be alpha of h x for all h in h. Note that g naught is nothing but h ok. So, these are all the things that we have already seen. So, we also proved some of the properties of these roots. roots. So, what are all the properties we proved? We observed that 0 is not in phi and then the span of phi is actually equal to h star and then if alpha is in phi. So, then we proved that minus alpha is also in phi. So, later uh, we have used this information in order to actually get uh, this SL2 triple. So, for alpha is in phi. So, we given any non-zero element x alpha inside g alpha. So, we actually constructed this y alpha inside g minus alpha such that this subalgebra generated by this x alpha y alpha that becomes isomorphic to the SL2C. So, that means the span of x alpha y alpha and then this h alpha which is x alpha y alpha bracket. So, this is isomorphic to our SL to C. So, this three dimensional sub, sub algebra we denote it by SL2 of alpha. So, for each alpha, so we have this SL2 triple. So, we will see later that uh, these SL2 triples actually kind of uh, builds that our entire uh, Lie algebra. So, we will use uh, this SL2 triple or this SL2 alpha and then use the representation theory of this SL2 alpha. Uh, then we conclude more about uh, 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 the properties of the root systems and the root spaces. Okay. So, we will naturally make this SL2 alpha act on this uh, G via again adjoint action. So, via adjoint action. So, what is the meaning of that? So, given x in SL2 of alpha. So, this x will act on G by sending y to bracket x. So, that is the action we are talking about. Okay. So, let us uh, uh, look at some interesting uh, submodules of G, uh, which are SL2 alpha submodules. Okay, so the very first uh, submodule that comes to our mind is uh, SL2 alpha itself. So if we take SL2 of alpha, so recall this is the span of x alpha, y alpha, and h alpha. H alpha is being this bracket uh, x alpha y alpha. So this is indeed. Uh, SL2 alpha submodule. So, this is indeed SL2 of alpha submodule. So, so what it is actually as SL2 of alpha submodule. So, note that it is naturally isomorphic to the adjoint representation of SL2. So, in particularly if we compute uh, the Eigen values of H alpha, you can see that H alpha act on X alpha as twice X alpha. Similarly, h alpha acts on h alpha by 0 
and h alpha acts on y alpha by minus 2 y alpha. So, that means this S L 2 of alpha as S L 2 of alpha module naturally isomorphic to V of 2 as S L 2 module. Okay. So, this is very interesting uh, sub representation of G S L 2 sub representation of G. So, now we will actually construct another interesting sub representation. So, which is again very useful. So, we take this V to be H sum S L 2 of alpha. So, this is uh, indeed if you think about it. Uh, so, this is actually going to be H direct sum C x alpha direct sum C y alpha. So, it is actually dimension H plus 2 dimensional S L 2 of alpha module inside your G. So, why it is actually S L 2 of alpha sub module? So, that is easy to check because if we take x alpha and then apply it on any h. So, then we can see that this is going to be minus h x alpha. So, that means this is going to be minus alpha of h x alpha. And similarly, if we compute y alpha on any h, you can see that this is going to be uh, minus bracket h y alpha. So, that is going to give us alpha of h y alpha and this is true for all h in h. So, now elements of S L 2 alpha will be invariant under action of S L 2 of alpha that is very clear. So, that means this V is indeed uh, S L 2 of alpha sub module. But uh, uh, if we actually go back to S L 2 representation theory, uh, you can see that this is actually finite dimensional S L 2 module. So, now in any given finite dimensional S L 2 module using Wiles uh, complete reducibility, we can see that any finite dimensional module can be written as a direct sum of irreducible modules. So, in particularly, so recall this the following uh, important fact from S L 2 representation theory. If V is finite dimensional S L 2 module and V if you write it as direct sum of V 1 etcetera V k where each V i's are irreducible. So, then if you want to compute the number of components k inside V, then you can easily see that. So, this will be exactly equal to the dimension of this V 0 plus the dimension of V 1. So, what is V 0? So, V 0 is the those vector V in V such that H V actually kills and then V 1 is nothing but those vectors V in V such that H V acts as identity. So, what is the meaning of that? So, this is uh, eigen space corresponding to the eigen value 0 and this space is eigen space corresponding to the eigen value 1. So, if you compute uh, uh, the uh, irreducible uh, decomposition of this capital V, then we know that uh, uh, this will be written as direct sum of uh, these uh, irreducible modules and each irreducible module will be isomorphic to some V of d i. So, but we know all the H weights of V of d i. The H weights of H weights are H eigen vector eigen values of this V of d i. So, they are all minus d i sorry plus d i etcetera d i minus 2 etcetera etcetera minus d i. So, this will differ by 2 and then it will start with d i and then end with minus d i. Now, depending upon the parity of d i either 0 will be Eigen value or 1 will be Eigen value for each v i and it is exactly each Eigen spaces will be having 1 dimensional. So, that implies that v of d i 0 either this is non 0 or v of d i 1 is non 0. Not only that in this case either we will have dimension of V of d i 0 is 1 or the dimension of V of d i 1 is 1. So, that means if you are interested in computing the number of uh, uh, irreducible components that occur in the decomposition of this capital V. So, it is enough to just count the number of uh, the dimension of the 0th eigen space 
with respect to h and then the dimension of the oneth eigen space with respect to h okay so because these dimensions will contribute to uh, each uh, irreducible module inside capital v so if we go back to this uh, representation which is h uh, some sl2 of alpha you can see that so this this representation now can be written as uh, uh, kernel of alpha direct sum this sl2 of alpha so now if you think about it this kernel of alpha this corresponds to uh, uh, the h eigen values h alpha eigen values will be zero so because uh, if we take uh, h alpha and then act it on this h so this will be zero for all h in inside this kernel of alpha and then if we take this sl2 of alpha we have already seen that so this is irreducible and this corresponds to exactly v of 2 so this is isomorphic to v of 2 because this is isomorphic to adjoint sl2 representation so that means this module this capital v that we have constructed okay so this capital v which is h sum sl2 of alpha is given by kernel alpha direct sum this sl2 of alpha so this kernel alpha corresponds to direct sum of this uh, trivial sl2 modules so that means uh, this is exactly equal to v of 0 uh, power direct sum dimension h minus 1 times uh, that v of 0s because each v of 0 will have one dimensional irreducible module and then this will be exactly equal to v of 2 so indeed we get as a sl2 decomposition so this module capital v will be v of 2 direct sum this v of 0 uh, exactly dimension h minus 1 times multiplicities so this is how you break down this uh, uh, h uh, some sl2 of alpha so now let us use this information and then uh, try to get uh, what root spaces and what multiple of roots can occur so let us uh, use this information so for that what we will do we will actually construct another sl2 of alpha module which we denoted by capital u so what is this capital u capital u is nothing but you take h and then you take all the sum of this g c alpha where c is actually non zero so c a priori varies over complex numbers right now but we will see in a, in a minute that there will be lots of restriction on c indeed we will prove that c can be exactly either plus or minus 1 but before that uh, you can see that this is uh, clearly sl2 of alpha sub module so u is sl2 of alpha sub module of g so now since this is a finite dimensional module as being a subspace of g so this is finite dimensional sl2 of alpha module so in particularly all the h alpha eigen values so that must be integer but let us compute what will be the h alpha action so h alpha acting on h will be 0 for all h in h and then if we take h alpha acts on this x will be just uh, so where let us say x is coming from g c alpha then you can see that h alpha acting on x will be c alpha of h alpha times x but uh, recall this alpha of h alpha must be 2 so that means this is going to give us twice c x now since all the h alpha eigen values of this u must be integer so we get this 2 c they are all integers so in particularly we get immediately that c must be of integer okay so this is the first restriction uh, that we are getting immediately so now uh, take this u since this is a finite dimensional sl2 module 
this can be written as uh, direct sum of uh, irreducible modules. So, we would like to see uh, what kind of decomposition it has. So, for that purpose uh, let us write down this u as uh, you can already see that uh, this uh, u contains this h sum SL2 of alpha. So, in we know how to decompose this h plus SL2 of alpha. So, that is already written as uh, kernel alpha direct sum this SL2 of alpha. So, let us say we have some more module that are left inside u. So, this is a sub module of uh, u. So, let us say it has a complementary sub module let us call that is w. Okay. So, w is a complementary SL2 module sub module of this capital U. Okay. So, our ultimate climb will be actually this w must be 0. So, this is what we want to prove. So, let us assume on the contrary this w is not 0. Okay. So, otherwise let us say this w is actually non 0. So, then what we want to do we want to analyze what will happen now. Okay. So, note that if we write this u as direct sum of irreducible components then the number of irreducible components that occur inside this capital U. So, that will be equal to exactly the dimension of this U naught plus dimension of this U 1 where U naught is the 0 th eigenspace of H alpha and U 1 is the 1 th eigenspace of H alpha. So, this is exactly the number of irreducible components that we know. Okay. So, now uh, if we actually go back and then see what are all the Eigen values of H alpha. So, we already see that the H alpha Eigen values must be twice C. Okay. So, now let us put them together and then see what really happens. So, note that if we take this capital U, so this capital U is nothing but what? It is H sum uh, direct sum G C alpha C is non 0. So, if we just take uh, this uh, U 0 which is the 0th Eigen space. So, that is not going to be equal to H because H is going to be subset of this U 0 because H alpha acts on H by 0 for all H in H. So, that means H is contained in this U 0 and then we can see that whether there is anything left. So, that is uh, if at all if it comes from then it should come from this G C alpha. But if you go back and then look at the action of H alpha on this uh, G C alpha for x in this G C alpha you can see that the bracket H alpha x is nothing but exactly equal to 2 C x. So, if uh, this uh, hex is actually comes from this uh, uh, 0th Eigen space then that forces that this 2 C is being 0. So, that means C being 0. So, that means there is nothing else that is left in this uh, 0th Eigen space. So, that that proves that this U naught must be equal to H. Okay. So, this is something uh, we could we could observe immediately. So, now you can see that if w is non 0, so then this w must contain some irreducible representation. Okay, Let us call it that is v d, so which is uh, inside w. So, this is irreducible SL2 representation. So, suppose this d is even. So, then what happens uh, you can see that uh, the 0th eigenspace of this V d thus must be non 0. So, V d 0th eigenspace. So, this is the 0th eigenspace of course, with respect to the H alpha. So, this must be non 0, but V d of 0 is inside your W 0. But W 0 we just saw that that must be 0 because U 0 is itself H. 
So, this forces that W0 must be 0 because W being the complementary of H because H is actually lies inside this kernel alpha direction SL2 of alpha. So, that forces that this V D0 must be 0 which is the contradiction. So, this contradiction we got by assuming D is being even. So, that forces D must be odd okay, D must be odd integer. Okay, before considering this odd integer, let us uh, actually see what we what we get from this uh, D cannot be uh, this even integer. So, for that uh, let us take uh, uh, this alpha inside phi okay. for some reason let us say twice alpha is also in phi. Okay. If 2 alpha is in phi okay, for some alpha in phi, so then what happens? So, if we compute this h alpha eigen value for 2 alpha. Okay. So, if 2 alpha is in phi then just compute 2 alpha of h alpha you can see that that must be 4. So, but what is u? u is already given to be kernel alpha direct sum SL2 of alpha direct sum this w, but we know how to decompose this kernel alpha direct sum SL2 of alpha. So, this is exactly equal to V of 0 which is dimension h minus 1 times and then direct sum V of 2. So, that means this uh, Eigen value 4 that cannot occur inside this kernel alpha direct sum SL2 of alpha. So, that means if this Eigen value 4 if at all occurs this has to occur inside W only. Okay. But that cannot happen just we just verified that. So, there is no VD inside W such that D is even. Okay, so, this leads to contradiction. So, that proves that if alpha is in phi, so then we must have 2 alpha is not in phi. Okay, any even multiple of alpha cannot be again in phi. So, that is what uh, we verify. So, now we go back to uh, uh, D being odd. Okay, Let us say we have V D which is inside W. So, we have assumed that W is being non-zero. So, W must contain some irreducible sub representation that we are calling it V D. So, we already observed that D cannot be even uh, cannot be even. So, because of that we can we may get that D is being odd. Okay. So, let us see what uh, contradiction we get in this case. If V D is actually inside W such that D is odd so, then you can see that V D 1. So, this is that uh, one Eigen space with respect to H alpha. So, that must be non-zero. So, that forces that. So, this W 1 which is again one Eigen space of this uh, uh, H alpha that must be non-zero. So, in particularly you get some V in W 1 such that when you act H alpha on V then you should get V. Okay. But the thing is this W is coming from the complementary of this kernel alpha direct sum SL2 of alpha. So, that means this W if you write it as direct sum of eigenspaces. So, this eigenspaces must correspond to this G C alpha there is no other eigenspaces. So, so that means this V must come from this G C alpha. Okay. So, now C has to be non-zero otherwise uh, this G 0 will be H which is inside that complementary space. So, then if you compute H alpha V then you can see that this is given by C times alpha of H alpha times V which is exactly equal to 2 C V. But that forces that 2 C must be equal to 1 that forces that C must be equal to off. Okay. So, that means we got that off alpha is in phi. But note that already alpha is there in phi which is twice of alpha. So, this is already in phi, but this is a contradiction we just proved 
uh, above that for any alpha in phi 2 alpha cannot be in phi. So, that means half alpha also cannot be in phi. Okay. So, that proves that uh, uh, d cannot be odd as well. Okay. Since d cannot be even as well as odd, so there is no option for d. So, that proves that w must be 0. So, this forces w must be 0, there is no other option. Okay. So, that means the u that we constructed which is h some direct sum g c alpha c non 0 is exactly equal to the kernel alpha direct sum s l 2 of alpha. So, this indeed actually gives lots of striking facts. You can see that g c alpha is non 0 then that would imply immediately that c is actually either plus or minus 1 and then g alpha is spanned by c x alpha and then g minus alpha is spanned by c y alpha. Okay. So, that means the dimension of g alpha is 1 for all alpha in phi. So, that is what it proves and not only that if alpha is in phi and c alpha is in phi for any c non-zero uh, complex number then we get c must be either plus or minus 1. So, this is also something we proved using this. So, this puts lots of restriction on the uh, on the root spaces. So, now uh, <coughs> we are ready to prove uh, some more properties of this uh, root system which are again very important. So, for that purpose we need to consider what is called this alpha string through beta. Okay. So, this is something uh, that we want to consider for that purpose let us actually uh, define what is called this uh, alpha string through beta. Okay. So, let us let us say alpha beta both are elements of phi. So, so far what we have actually observed we just uh, looked at one particular root and then looked at uh, its multiple of uh, alphas and then we concluded something about the root spaces and so on. But now we, what we want to do we want to understand how two different roots alpha and beta they actually interact with each other. So, you take alpha beta is in phi such that this beta is actually not equal to plus or minus alpha. If it is plus or minus alpha we know how to deal with that. So, so because of that we just assume it is not plus or minus alpha. So, then what we do we consider what is called this uh, alpha string through beta. Okay, this alpha string through beta. So, what it is? It is by definition maybe we just denoted by s of beta comma alpha. So, this is those beta plus k alpha such that okay, you, you choose those k inside integer such that these beta k alpha they are all roots again. Okay. So, this is what we call uh, alpha string through beta. So, we want to actually conclude uh, many things about uh, this alpha string through beta. So, for that purpose what we will do we will actually consider uh, this again another SL2 of alpha module. So, there is this natural module let, let us call it M. So, which is just the direct sum of all this g beta plus k alpha where k now comes from z. Note that if uh, k does not come from this s beta of alpha then g beta plus k alpha will be 0. Okay. k is not from s of beta comma alpha. So, then we get g beta plus k alpha equal to 0. Okay. So, and uh, note that uh, since uh, g itself is uh, uh, finite dimensional so, this s of beta alpha must be finite. So, that means there exists some large q such that beta plus q alpha is a root and there exists r such that beta minus r alpha is also root. Okay. So, since uh, s of beta alpha is finite, so we can find q and r both are non-negative integers such that 
beta plus q alpha. So, this is inside your s of beta of alpha and beta minus r alpha this is also inside your s of beta of alpha. So, such q and r can be found uh, because s of beta alpha is finite. Okay. So, indeed what we want to climb, so I, let me just uh, tell you uh, I do not want to keep you in surprise. So, the climb is if we take this s of beta of alpha we will prove that it is indeed unbroken and it is going to be exactly equal to beta plus q alpha comma etcetera beta plus q minus 1 alpha etcetera beta etcetera beta minus r alpha. So, it will go all the way down to beta minus r alpha from starting from beta plus q alpha. So, this chain is in some sense unbroken and then it will start with beta plus q alpha and end with beta minus r alpha. So, it is like the interval bracket q minus r, okay, it is unbroken interval. So, let us prove this. So, for this purpose we need to understand the structure of SL2 uh, module this m. Okay. Note that uh, if we take this m, so then let us compute all the h alpha eigenvalues. So, for x inside g, g beta k alpha, we can see that h alpha x will be exactly equal to beta plus k alpha of h alpha times x. So, that means exactly beta of h alpha plus twice alpha sorry twice k times x. So, that is what we get as eigenvalues. So, beta of h alpha plus 2 k. So, these are all the eigenvalues of of this uh, of this m. So, since this m is finite dimensional SL2 module. So, we can immediately get that this beta of h alpha plus 2 k they must be actually integers. In particularly for k equal to 0 we get beta of h alpha must be integer because for k equal to 0 g beta is sits inside m. Okay. So, this is something immediate. So, now what we will do we will just try to understand the SL2 alpha module structure of this direct sum of g beta plus k alpha where k runs over integer. So, note that the dimension of this g beta plus k alpha they are all 1. Okay. So, because the dimension of g alpha is 1 for all alpha in phi. So, in particularly if, if, if it actually survives if g beta plus k alpha if it is non-zero. So, then we can easily conclude the dimension of g beta plus k alpha must be 1. So, now if this is 1 uh, then what happens uh, you can see that the eigenvalues are of the form beta of h alpha plus 2 k. So, that means the parity of this beta of h alpha and whatever eigenvalues that survive they they have same parity. So, if beta of h alpha is even then all the eigenvalues that survive here they must be even. Again beta of h alpha is odd then the whatever eigenvalues that survive they are all odd. So, since this uh, this this uh, eigenvalues are all same parity. So, that says that either m of 0 will be non-zero or m of 1 will be non-zero. Since all these eigenvalues differ by 2 or this uh, differ by multiple of 2 and all these uh, uh, root spaces they have one dimension that forces that either we will have the dimension of m0 is 1 or the dimension of m1 is 1. So, that means this m that we have is indeed actually irreducible module. 
it is irreducible SL2 module. So, in particularly this will be isomorphic to some VD. So, now note that we already know what are all the H alpha eigenvalues of this VD. So, that is nothing but starting with D, D minus 2 and so on up to D minus D plus 2 and then minus D. So, this must be exactly equal to. So, if we take beta of H alpha plus 2 k where this uh, beta plus k alpha comes from S of beta of alpha. Okay. So, this is exactly what we have. Since they all differ by multiple of 2, you can see that. So, if we take this uh, q and r as above, so whatever we have fixed this q and r from that you can see that. So, if it is starting with that q then we will get beta of h alpha plus 2 q and then it will go. So, you just subtract by 2 because every time you are subtracting by 2. So, this is the max value. So, beta of h alpha plus 2 q minus 1 and so on then you go all the way down to minus oh sorry beta of h alpha minus twice r and this is going to be your minus d and this is going to be your plus d. So, that gives us the following relation. So, beta of h alpha plus 2 q must be equal to minus beta of h alpha plus 2 r. So, this forces that beta of h alpha is equal to r minus q. Okay. So, we have uh, plenty of consequences uh, from uh, what we have observed. So, beta of h alpha is r minus q and this root string alpha string through beta. So, that is unbroken and uh, so exactly we get uh, all these uh, roots here. So, let, let me just write down all the consequences. So, if we take so, we, we just observe that there exist q and r inside e z plus such that beta plus q alpha and so on beta minus r alpha. So, this is unbroken, this is unbroken chain and this is all subset of phi. And the second thing that we observed beta of h alpha is nothing but r minus q. Now, note that if we compute this beta minus beta of h alpha alpha. So, this is going to be exactly beta minus r minus q alpha. So, which is exactly going to be beta minus q sorry plus q minus r times alpha. So, but what is about this q minus r you can see that this can be at most q and then at least r sorry at least uh, minus r. So, that implies this beta minus beta of h alpha alpha. So, this is again element of phi. So, this is again very important uh, consequence. So, we have made uh, many interesting uh, consequences. So, let me list all of them. Okay. So, here, uh, here is the properties of the roots. So, what are all the properties? The very first property that we have seen the dimension of g alpha that should be 1 for all alpha in phi. So, that is about the Lie algebra, but anyway. So, we also have some other properties like 0 is not in phi and then the span of phi is equal to h star. So, these are also there let me denote it by 0 and the second property if alpha is in phi and then c alpha is in phi for c non-zero. So, then we must have c equal to plus or minus 1. So, this is there. The third property you can see that this if we take alpha beta is in phi then if you look at this beta minus beta of h alpha alpha. So, then that is also must be again inside your phi. 
the fourth property if alpha beta is in phi and alpha plus beta. So, this is in phi. So, then that will imply the bracket g alpha g beta. So, this must be non-zero which is exactly equal to g alpha plus beta. So, let us prove this. So, this g alpha and g beta if this is non-zero then that would force immediately g alpha g beta the bracket must be equal to g alpha plus beta as the dimension of g alpha plus beta can be at most 1. Okay. So, that is how uh, we can see. So, but why this the bracket g alpha g beta must be non-zero again you go back to that uh, irreducible module that m that we have constructed. So, this is going to be direct sum g beta plus k alpha at k coming from e z. So, this is the irreducible irreducible S L 2 module. So, that is we already observed. So, now for some reason if this g alpha g beta is 0, if g alpha g beta the bracket if this is 0. So, then what happens this x alpha. So, that is going to kill this x beta. Okay. So, this x alpha x beta they are all coming from uh, g alpha g beta respectively. So, that means uh, this h alpha is already going to give us uh, on x beta it is going to give us beta of h alpha x beta. So, that thing makes it x beta as maximal vector. So, maximal vector inside your m with Eigen value that is h alpha Eigen value beta of h alpha. So, that means this m will be spanned by x beta and then you just apply only y alpha y alpha x beta and so on and then you can apply up to y alpha power r times x beta. So, this span must be equal to m because m is generated by this maximal vector and this becomes maximal vector because m is irreducible. So, m has to be exactly span of these elements, but then look at all the weights. So, this will have beta and then this will have beta minus alpha and so on then you will have beta minus r alpha, but if you go back what the assumption our assumption is alpha plus beta is also a root. So, but it says that these are all the only only roots because this m is nothing but direct sum of g beta plus k alpha where k is coming from e z. This entire space is becoming span of this. So, that means these are all the only roots in in phi that implies beta plus alpha is not a root. So, which is a contradiction because we are given that this uh, alpha plus beta or beta plus alpha is a root. So, that forces that this uh, uh, g alpha g beta. So, that must be non-zero since g alpha plus beta is one dimensional and this is a non-zero subspace of g alpha plus beta that forces that these two should be equal. Okay, this proves uh, most of the properties of uh, uh, this uh, set of roots. So, I will just end with uh, one last property again that is uh, immediate actually uh, from the uh, properties of the roots. Okay. So, here is the last property. So, g as a Lie algebra generated by g alpha alpha in phi. Okay. We already know that g is actually equal to h direct sum direct sum g alpha alpha in phi. So, that means we need to prove that if we call this is uh, g plus. So, then this h must lie inside g plus. Okay. So, it is enough to prove. So, it is enough to prove that uh, h is inside g, g plus. So, how do you want one proves that? So, we just take uh, all this g alphas and then see what happens. Okay. For alpha in phi you know that the bracket g alpha g minus alpha. 
So, this is going to be this one dimensional space C t alpha which is same as C h alpha. So, this is going to lie inside G plus okay? and this is true for all alpha in phi. So, the forces that summation C t alpha alpha in phi. So, this is going to be a subspace of G plus, but note that phi actually spans H star. So, and there is this identification of H with H star via the killing form, via the killing form. So, that means this space must be equal to H. So, H is contained in G plus that forces that G plus is equal to G. So, as a Lie algebra this G alphas they also generate uh, this entire G. So, more or less uh, we have proved all the important properties of the roots. So, again uh, uh, it is all happening now inside the uh, maximal total subalgebra which is uh, defined over the complex numbers. So, somehow we need to actually bring down everything over reals. Okay? So, that is something I will do it in the next class, uh, I will stop now, thank you.